This video is going to talk about integer exponents. Before we get into this, remember that you already know some important exponent laws. So the first one oops, is if you have two numbers multiplied together that have the same base, but different exponents, that can be combined together and you have one exponent, but you add those two numbers together. The second one is the same sort of thing, but it works for division. So two of the same base dividing each other, different numbers on the top and on the bottom, and that gives you those two numbers subtracted. Oops, let's fix that up. The third one is if you have two different numbers multiplied together and they have an exponent, then each one gets the exponent, and another one is if you have a fraction which is made up of two numbers and there's an exponent that each number, the top one, gets the exponent and the bottom one gets the exponent. So from there, we want to try and ask some weird questions. And uh, that involves uh, integers. And remember, integer is the fancy word for whole number, both positive and negative. Integers means whole number positive or negative. So you can ask a weird question, like what does it mean to say five to the power of zero? Or what does it mean to say five to the power of negative two? And you could make up an answer and decide that was the one you wanted to go with, but instead we're going to use these laws, in particular this one, to try and come up with something which makes sense and still works. Because if these are going to be laws, oops, if these are going to be laws, we want them to have no exceptions. So what we come up with has to work, and it's not going to matter what those numbers are going to be. So the way you get 5 to the 0 is you take something you do know, say for example 5 to the power 2, and divide it by 5 to the power 2. And according to the rule, that should be 5 to the power of 2 minus 2, which should be 5 to the 0 except you also just can do the math on this. This is 25 divided by 25, and 25 divided by 25 is 1. So this answer needs to be 1. And that's going to work, and it won't matter what this number is, it won't matter what these numbers are, if I have the same number on the top and the same number on the bottom, when I divide through, the answer is going to be 1. So you can turn that now into a new rule, uh, next Roman numeral. So any number raised to the power 0 is just equal to 1. And you can answer lots of questions really, really quickly. So if somebody says, what is, uh, what is 27 to the power 0? The answer is 1. What is 6 to the power 0? The answer is 1. What is negative 5 to the power 0? The answer is 1. So that's easy enough. What about the other one? What about 5 to the power of negative 2? You can do the same sort of trick using the same rule. So how about 5 to the power of 3 divided by 5 to the power of 5? If I write this out the long way, that's 3 fives on top, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, no, not the number 4, the 5. But this is a fraction, and I, when I have a string of multiplication or fraction, I can cancel something out. So times 5 and divided by 5 is the same as not doing anything at all, the same as with these two, the same as with these two. If you cancel everything out of a fraction, if you reduce it to its lowest terms, you are left with 1 on top. And then I have two 5s left on the bottom, so this is equal to 1 divided by 5 squared. And so this, by this rule, has to be 5 to the power of 3 minus 5. That has to be 5 to the negative 2. So 5 to the negative 2 and 1 over 5 squared have to be the same number. So you can add that, and that becomes yet another rule. So something to the power of negative 
n, whatever that number is, is 1 over whatever that number was to the n. And so this will work for all sorts of numbers. So 4 to the power of negative 3, that is 1 over 4 to the 3. It doesn't even have to be, uh, it doesn't even have to be a number. So x to the power of negative 9, that is 1 over x to the 9. That's because we're using laws. If you switch from, uh, from a number to a variable, it's not going to change the answer. Same thing, negative 3 to the negative 6, and that's equal to 1 over negative 3 to the 6. I'm going to pause for a moment right now and remind you that when you have a negative number inside of a bracket and an exponent, the brackets matter and that can affect things. So if I have negative 2 squared, and I write that out the long way, that is negative 2 times negative 2, and the answer is positive 4. But if I have negative 2 squared, I have to do the exponent first, basic bed mass, which is 4, and then the negative still stays in the front. So these two, negative 2 squared and negative 2 squared, they do not have the same answer. One of them is this plus 4, one of them is this minus 4. So having the brackets there matters. And also remember that if there's an odd number of them, so uh, negative 2 to the power 3, that will be 3 of these, 2, and there will be 1, 2, 3 negative, so the answer will be negative, and this will be 2 to the 3, or negative 8. But then this will have the same answer, because this is also, uh, this part is also 8, and this negative is also this negative. So it's important not to rush when you're doing those things. Now what about if you already have um, a fraction. So 1 over 2 to the minus 3. And we'll work through it slowly and you'll see what the answer has to be. And then once you understand what the answer has to be, give you a shortcut so that you can use it for anything you want later on. So I leave the 1 over, but this piece from the rule, you know, is 1 over 2 to the 3. And the way you deal with a fraction that has too many levels on it is you take the largest piece of the fraction and you change that into this division symbol. So this becomes 1 divided by 1 over 2 to the 3. And then you have to remember back to grade whatever how you divide fractions. This is 1 over 1 divided by 1 over 2 to the 3, and I keep the first one the same. I turn the second one upside down, and I change the, t uh, the divide sign to multiplication. And now I do top times top, and bottom times bottom. This is 2 or 3 over 1 times 1 is 1, which is just 2 to the 3. So 1 over 2 to the minus 3 is just 2 to the 3. So in a way you can think of fractions as having a top and having a bottom, and a negative exponent will just move it to the other side. If it was on top, this would move it down to the bottom, it would become 1 over 2 to the 3. So they shift back and forth. What about a fraction? So 3 quarters to the power of negative 2. So we have the rule way back when here that says that each one gets the exponent. So 3 to the negative 2, 4 to the negative 2, keep the big fraction line the same. 
This top one is one over three squared. This bottom one is one over four squared. This becomes the divide sign, one over three squared, one over four squared. Change this to multiplication, keep this the same. Oops. Turn the second one upside down, top times top, bottom times bottom. And so this is four squared over three squared. All these did was change places. And now this rule, the same one, can also work in reverse. So if the exponent is the same, you can have just one if you put the brackets back in. So this could also be one big bracket with just the two showing up once. And so you have a choice depending on what the question is and what you want to do with it. If you have a negative exponent, you can turn it upside down and give it to each one, or you can turn it upside down, but not give it to each one. So this law is a little bit different in that it has options. So a fraction with a negative exponent can either be the fraction upside down, but without the negative, so there is no negative here, or it can be the fraction, let's make that look more like an A, uh, the fraction upside down, but with the exponent being here and the exponent being here and having your choice. Now, you're ready to do just about everything. And the only thing to remember now is that all of the old laws still work. So if you have, for example, three to the five times three to the negative two, even though a negative number has shown up over here, this still has to be 3 to the 5 plus minus 2. Now, this way of writing things where you actually do the math in this little space where the exponent goes is really nice, but it only works if you have nice handwriting. Uh, so you want to make sure you're writing a little bit bigger and try and write as clearly as possible because if you can't tell the difference between when you're writing 34 and 3 to the power of four, if these two start to look the same as one another, you're going to get yourself very, very confused very, very fast. Uh, but this has to be uh, five, uh, take away two, three to the power of three. And now it's important to read the instructions on the question. So sometimes all we care about is that you can find the right pattern to use and figure out that instead of having two of these, you have one of these and this is enough for you to be done. Sometimes the question wants you to go a step further. It actually wants you to work out what is 3 to the power of 3, 3 times 3 times 3. That is 27. So you have to decide, is it enough to stop here? Or do I have to do the extra work? Are they asking me to go all the way? Uh, and normally, as a rule, we say we don't want to have negative exponents so this will be a rule, uh, which is no negative exponents in a final answer. So if you had a question that asked you, what is uh, 3 to the 4 times, uh, let's do it differently, 3 to the 4 to the negative 2. That's the rule where you multiply them together. So this is 3 to the 4 times negative 2, which is 3 to the negative 8. Yes, you have used the rule. So you got that to work. And yes, you put it together, and that is still correct. But you need to go a step further. You need to have an answer where there are no negative numbers in the exponents. So this is considered the correct answer. So this rule 
now gets added to your list forever of things that you remember when you're answering questions. Things like if it is in a uh, uh, if it is a word problem, your answer has a sentence at the end of it. If it is a measurement problem, your answer has units at the end of it. If your answer is a fraction, you need to reduce the fraction to the lowest terms. And now, if your answer has a negative exponent in it, you need to flip appropriately so there's no negative exponents when you're done. One last thing uh, which I will say, and this just speeds things up. If you have a fraction that reduces, so say something like six, uh, let's use the other color, six eighths squared. That should be six squared over eight squared, which is 36 divided by 64. Now this is not a fraction in lowest terms, which means I want to look and find, so for example, uh, both of these numbers uh, divide by 4, so divide by 4, divide by 4, uh, and so this is 9 over 16, and this doesn't reduce any further. Now what you would have noticed is this fraction over here is not in lowest terms. So instead, before I do the exponent, do the easy part first, which is take this fraction and reduce it, there, like this. Now this is 3 squared over 4 squared, which is 9 over 16. And notice it was much, much easier for me to realize that there was a common denominator between 6, or sorry, a common factor between 6 and 8, and I could reduce this to 3 quarters. Uh, than it was to realize that both 36 and 64 uh, were divisible by 4. So if you're given a choice, either I could reduce the fraction or I could do the exponent law, the way you decide which to do first is the one that we taught you first is the one that you do first. For example, reducing fractions, that goes all the way back to elementary school. Exponent laws, that's something which is clearly from high school, so if you do the easy part first, which is reducing, uh, then the hard part, the exponent law, then you will get an answer and it will be less work when you do it that way. Uh, and uh, the other thing is if this fraction cannot be reduced, then after you do the exponent law, this fraction cannot be reduced. So if you can tell that this is in lowest terms, then you don't have to really worry too much about whether 9 and 16 will have a common factor. But because 6 and 8 did have a common factor, uh, when you expand it, 36 and 64 are going to have a common factor, but because now you've made the numbers larger because of the exponents, you're going to make it easier to find. So the last thing I would suggest is if you don't have one already, is to take uh, a piece of paper and make a list of uh, all of these laws here and have it next to you when you do your work. And don't be too concerned about memorizing what the rules are. Uh, just uh, do as many of them, uh, uh, just use it, look it up every time you do a question. If you're not sure, look at what the rule should be, use it. And when you start doing 20 questions, 30 questions, 40 questions, it all kind of gets settled in there and you can do it. So one last thing to finish off, let's see if we can make up uh, a hard question for ourselves just as a challenge. If I have any more paper, we do. So uh, we will do 3 squared times 3 to the minus 5 to the power of minus 4 divided by 3 to the minus 6 squared divided by 3 to the 5. And I picked these numbers completely at random and I have absolutely no idea how this is going to turn out, but let's see if we can do it. Now, uh, bed mass still applies, so these are exponents with exponents. Uh, so that rule should be done first. So the 3 squared can stay. And this will be 3 to the minus 5 times minus 4. This will be 3 to the minus 6 times 2 divided by 3 to the 5. This will be 3 squared, uh, that was a time sign, 
always copy down the next line of the question properly. 3 to the 20 and positive 20. 3 to the negative 12. 3 to the 5. Carry this up over here. The top ones, this is the one, whoops. This is the one where I add them together. This is division, so I will subtract them. Uh, 2 plus 20, negative 12, negative 5, negative 17. And this is division, so this is subtraction. And this is where you want to really take your time, because this is 22 minus negative 17. And if you're in a hurry, it can be a very hard thing to figure out whether should I be adding these numbers or subtracting these numbers. Well, this really should be 3 to the 22 plus 17, which is uh, 9 and 3. And that is a number much too large to think about. Uh, so good luck with your homework. If you have questions about any of this, leave it in the comments. Uh, Rewatch the video as many times as you like. Uh, and hopefully we'll try another one of these again soon.